understand what the difference between the normal tribalism that we have and eco tourism. The definition I would give to eco tourism is the type of tourism that keeps a balance between the development and maintaining the natural beauty and ambience of the environment. It's also the type of development that does not only respect profit, respect money, it respects the welfare of the local community. It actually puts the welfare of the environment and the local community first and profit and business second. Now, we know you can't run a business without profit and it's not sustainable. Business and profit should be there, but they should be an equal amount of respect you give to maintaining the natural ambience that is environment. Yes. Because without the environment, the business shuts mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. yes. Without the locals, then what's the point of having this? The prime example is just the opposite screen that we're going to visit, where they try to attempt that format and it failed completely. Then exactly. The environment quickly shut down and then they say, make your money, let's see you make your money now when there's nothing. And there was no money <laughs> to make. No one is making money at the end of the day. Exactly. All right, uh, so stay tuned. I'll take you around the environment and then we'll visit the screen that has become caught for them. Uh, this is Miju Eco Care and see you around. It's hot. You check out the steam. But this is serious, man. This is not bad. It is. Like when you're seeing a snail boat, you make the oil out. This is serious, man. Especially the, the therapeutic spa. Yeah. You come here for dinner. Look at the kind of money people spend in these uh, different shops. Yes, yes. They will massage, whatever. That money could be coming here. Anyway, right. So wherever you find there's a hot spring, there must be a valley near to that area. So in this case, the nearest to valley to this area is Ruano Valley in Central Province. So according, yeah, according to the direction of here and there, it tells us that it comes from this direction. So where it's coming from, there's molten magma and hot lava, then it forms a fort. So the heat from the earth crust and the molten magma passes through that port. When it reaches at the water table, that's when water starts boiling. So as it boils, it gains pressure and as it starts flowing in that port. So this happens to the weaker part of the port. That's why water managed to find its way out from there. So when you get closer there, especially when you stand where the wind blows to, you smell a scent. This water smells like boiled eggs. That's because of the composition of minerals. So it's composed of four minerals. There's a silica, sulfur, calcium, and manganese. Sulfur is in excess and it's the one smells like what breaks the sulfur. So if you drink excess of this water, it has an effect on the teeth. It stains the teeth. It's a very big example. Surrounding villagers here, before that bottles, they used to drink this water. So there's that. A lot of people here, they've got stained teeth. Their teeth are brown because of those minerals. But the same water, if you use it for external use, very good for the skin, nourishes the skin. Even if one has pimples, rashes, natural sores, body pains, stress, it helps. So those are health benefits of, for this hot spring. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's scientific. Now coming to people's beliefs. People have got so many beliefs about this water, hence groups of people uses this water according to their understanding. So are people like pastors and prophets. Them, they believe that this water is holy. They normally use it for uh, heat, uh, as, uh, uh, for healing and for prayers as holy water or anointing water in their churches. Then we have churches like Zion churches, those who put on a white gowns. Then they believe that this water has two properties which are trust them. They say that it's holy at the same time as healing power. So it being holy, they use it for baptism and they've got two types of baptism. They do it from here, just get this water in a bucket, then pour it on someone. That's how they baptize. Downstream there are almost those banana plants. There is a certain point where the same water breaks. It's more like a dam. So that's how they remains. That's how they subscribe. But they also believe that that is the same water for healing power. They also use it for healing. If someone is sick from their church, they might come to those people who are sick, bath them this water, make them drink a certain amount and pray for them. And after that, they uh, 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 believe that all will be well or someone will be healed because of that. Then we have people like the Indians. The Indians, they also believe that this water has two properties which are attractive. They say that it's holy. At the same time, uh, it helps when 
they use it to uh, uh, perform, uh, they use it to, uh, for uh, healing. So what they normally do whenever they come here, each of them will get a certain amount and they drink. After drinking, they will bath. If it's not bathing, steaming. One will sit there, cover with a blanket or a bed sheet. That steam which is coming out goes to the body, not until it makes someone sweat. That's when they uncover. Mind you, there's a lot of steam coming out here. So when that you come when it's hot, so it goes humid. It. As hot as it is, you can't see a lot of steam. But when you come during eight hours, or, or before sunrise or after sunset, when it's very cold, when the air is saturated with moisture, you find that all this area will be covered with steam on the other side of the road. So that's when it's cold. Yeah. So if you were to cover yourself there just within five minutes, you'll be sweating as if someone has poured water on you. So that's how the Indians use this water. Then we have those people believe in rituals, traditional doctors and so forth. They believe that traditionally people believe that this water is being brought by the ancestral spirits. So what they normally do whenever they come here, uh, a lot of strange activities used to happen from here, more especially before it was protected. Mm -hmm. A lot of strange activities used to take place from here. Sometimes when you come, you just one, they find that there's blood here. You don't know where that blood has come from. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you find there's a chicken. Someone has slaughtered the chicken, pluck it, leaving the feathers and the chicken so right here as a sacrifice for the ancestral spirits. Sometimes you find that there's a dish with the charms inside, meaning someone was bathing medicines at night. Sometimes you find that uh, uh, there are clothes here. In the one of those clothes, he or she must be either experiencing bad dreams, bad luck, bad diseases, might be being balanced. So they will come, perform the rituals thereafter, and dress and leave the clothes here. Having a belief that if they've left the clothes here, all those things which troubles them will remain here. Then them, they'll be free wherever they will go. So those things will be dealt with it by the ancestral spirits. When you go down these trees, you find some trees are either tied with plastics, clothes, beads, or, uh, or, or plastics, uh, uh, clothes, or beads. Or sometimes, some trees, the bugs were removed, like this one. So they use those things for medicine, of course. Traditionally, people believe that all these, the vegetation surrounding this area, they've got special powers because there's the presence of the ancestral spirits here. So that's how this water is being used. But there are so many beliefs, those are just a few to mention. Then there's that pipe, that pipe was fixed there by certain white man, those who've been here before. That pipe it was it used to belong up to this height. Then it was designed like a, 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 a bow like. So the purpose of this pipe, this white man constructed the swimming pool through there. There's a very big swimming pool, it was built out of stones. So the purpose of this pipe, this white man, no, outside. So this white man wanted to tap this water to the swimming pool there. So the plans of taking it there failed. So the same white man, the one who fixed this, this pipe there, across the road, used to be another hot spring also. So here, he fixed this pipe. That side, he constructed the concrete slab where people used to sit when parking. So as time goes, the spring there changed into a cold spring. So traditionally, people believe that, as I've said earlier on that, people believe that this water is being boiled by the ancestral spirit. So the reason they give to why that spring there changed into a cold spring, they simply say because of the construction of the concrete slab, the ancestral spirits that side were annoyed. That's how they stopped the boiling water. But scientifically, everyone has stated that they are forced down. Mm -hmm. So if an earthquake or tsunami occurs, even if it's far away from here, mm -hmm. but as long as the earth has been affected, has been shaken, there's a possibility of those forts to close. So when the fort closes, meaning the heat from the earth crust and the molten magma will be trapped, therefore it no longer reaching where water is. Eventually, the spring will turn into a cold spring. Scientifically, I think that's what happened that side. So initially there are two slots of the hot spring. Yeah. This one here and the, yeah, one, yeah, and the other one across the road. Yeah. So that's how that side it turned into a hot spring. But the, the one on yeah, the other yeah. side. In the past, this hot spring, the two hot spring here where they are, this is a solid land. So it being a solid land, it has a local name. So locally they call this Chinyu hot spring as Kalungula. Kalungula is a solid which means hot. So the two hot springs were shared among the locals. This one and the other one across the road. So this one was used by men. Only men were allowed to bath from here, then it was renamed Kalungula Kamuna because men used to bath from here. Then the other one across the road, Kalungula Kakaz, because ladies used to bath from that side. So that's all about this hot spring. Then the temperature there at the source here is about 70 degrees Celsius. But the longer the distance water flows, the cooler it becomes. So it goes, flows downwards, keeps on reducing the temperature. So that's all about this hot spring. Unless there are questions. Yes, I wanted to find out, uh, the one that was across the road, where would you happen to know when, when it became cold, like, uh, in which year? You say, 
early 90s, but I didn't get the exact period. Yeah. The exact period. Yeah. Yeah. And then when the white man wanted to set up the pipe for this one, uh, does he still own the farm? No. He's no longer there. So, so are um, people free to visit the, the cold stream or yeah, maybe yeah. some someone's no? land? You can visit. Yeah, free right visit. across the road. Yeah. So water still flows like this, but it's cold? No, just uh, very little pressure, but it doesn't dry up. Okay. Um, because the animals usually stepped on it a lot. Okay. So it's like the land is compacted there. Oh, it's not someone's land, it's a public property? No, someone's land, but it's not developed. Is There's to... nothing. Okay. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You mentioned Kalungula, which means hot. Hot. Yeah, okay. Kalungula ka mamuna. Kalungula ka mamuna? Yeah, then Kalungula ka the other side. Okay. Mm. Yeah. And then Chinu is because of the area? All this area is called Chinu. Okay. Can mm. I step in from somewhere? Oh, it's it's too good. hot. It's too, too hot. hot. And it's down in there. Okay. Mm. Yes, too hot to come. So, uh, the extension of the pipe, what happened to it? It just broke or what? The one that you so as time goes, uh, it was being eaten up. Then it had leakages down there. Yes. Then it uh, wasn't look, uh, looking more natural. Yes. That's when we decided just to cut it off. Yes. So, in fact, we initially we wanted to cut it down there. Yes. So that it's invisible. Yes. But we uh, had the challenge. Whenever they try to cut it with a grinder, grinder in the cook just like that. Langaye banakoni sabal. Yes. 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 You come in and you find there's something mm -hmm. so full, you want to put it in yeah, so yeah, and own it. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Chinunu Hot Water Spring. This is like uh, 8 kilometers from the central business district, uh, Misaka. Uh, this is my second time visiting the place. I think the last time I was here must have been 2008, around that, uh, around that time. And, uh, it's a surreal moment that I need to take in um, experiencing the natural wonder it is of, 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 of this water, water space. I'm here with uh, Mishu Eco Care. Uh, it's an environmental institution. Uh, you check out our Facebook page and our YouTube uh, platform. Check out all, all the content that we put out. We put out a number of documentaries that we invest in and a lot uh, coming to So make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the page, share it, and uh, tag a uh, number of friends of yours. So uh, we are here to to look at the, the ecosystem around the, the hot water spring, to see if there's anything new and it's well maintained, and uh, are we maximizing the, the use of uh, this resource that we have in terms of it being used uh, as a choice uh, source or uh, we're, we're keeping it as basic as possible. We're trying to find out uh, if we are to develop this, uh, this environment. Will it be accessible to the locals or is it going to be a drop time? As anyone from the narration that, that we were given by the the tour guide from uh, National Heritage site. site, uh, he said, this attempt, as you can see, there's a, there's a pipe arrangement that's right here. This was an attempt by a white farmer who wanted to set up uh, a hot water spring, a pool arrangement for his personal farm upstream here. Uh, and um, it was a disaster, he told to take place. And this is a, a remnant of what, what, uh, what, that attempt. And then across the road, we go and, and see one of the springs. There are two of these. There was one, uh, this, this one for the, for the men, it was called, uh, what, what is the name again? Kamuna Kachi. Kamuna Kamuna. Meaning it is uh, a, a bathing place for the, for the gents. And then across the, the, the road, that's where you find the, for the ladies. But that one has become called, the, the, the water is, not, the, the pressure is the same as this. So, this particular video is going to show you the entire environment, what is new uh, around the area, and how the ecosystem Buzzing, buzzing out. Are we maximizing it as, uh, as Zambians or should we do better? Amount, but sulfur is in excess. So, is, what are the minerals again? There's sulfur, silica, calcium, and manganese.
good morning. My name is Kondwani Innocent. Welcome to Chinunyu Hot Springs. We're here having a tour and a wonderful visit to the hot springs of Lusaka. It is Lusaka, eh? Yeah, it's still in Lusaka district. I hope so. Yeah, so, welcome to the hot springs. Wonderful place. Have you been here before? I have been here before. Like this how, how recent? My, this should be my third time. Last time I was here should have been 2017. I was coming back from the east. So uh, from 2017 until now, in terms of uh, development around the area, is there anything new that has caught your eye or it's pretty much the same thing? The only development I've seen is the growth of vegetation at the back. I'm assuming they've allowed the number of people to cultivate vegetables in, in the back. That's, that's basically the only so in your view, uh, should this particular uh, spring be kept uh, in its natural state like this or would you rather it's developed into some five-star resort? Well, considering we only have one of these, the only kind of development I would want made is maybe a few pools down there, some sort of sauna, you know, where people can sit in there, relax, and as people say, the water comes with um, a variety of benefits, being healing for those that believe in the spiritual healing of the water, and for those that are um, into the scientific beliefs, we're told that the water actually carries a few chemicals that are very good for the skin and the body. But when, when you bring up that, that uh, story of uh, setting up a spring here, uh, from the narrator that we had earlier on, you could hear the story. Uh, this was an attempt to set up such a thing. There was a white farmer that wanted to do the same. And then just across the other side, we'll visit the cold one. Uh, it turned cold. So do, don't, you, don't you fear that will happen with this also? Well, it's something that's definitely going to happen eventually if we interfere with this. And if you can allude to what I said earlier on, is the food should be built down there. You only channel the water from further down there. But if you try to capture it from, from the source, most definitely you won't have that. But that's that that's problem. that's no. Yeah, as I earlier mentioned, I'm here with uh, Miju Eco Care, and uh, we are at uh, Chinunu Hot Water Spring. There are two local names which I'm not very comfortable with mentioning, so I'll not bother <laughs> mentioning them now. I'll use the publicly known name, which is uh, Chinunu Hot Water Spring. So I'm here with the director for Miju Eco Care, and I want to find out like uh, how many times have you been here? Numerous times. I, I can't count the number of times I've been here since childhood. What of this year? I hope you're going this year. This is my third. I was thinking, you know, we are together, uh, coming here together for the first time this year. This is no. your third visit? Yes, it is. So when you look at the environment, what are your thoughts so far? Well, I'll start with the spring itself. Mm -hmm. The spring is, is ever perfect. It's, it's all right. The problem I have is with the surrounding area. And I'm speaking as a concerned citizen, as a concerned Zambia. When you talk about the surrounding area, you're talking about in terms of its maintenance or development in terms of its structure? Both. Mm -hmm. Maintenance is, is this the best we can do? Development wise, apart from the structures right at the entrance, you know, the, the reception and the toilet, is that all we can have in a place like this? Yes. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we've, we've been here how many hours? Now two hours? Yes. We've only seen two other people come in. Huh? Yes. Is, is that the best we can do on a weekend? So, in, in terms of uh, it being located, it's not that much because there's nothing to do here, is it? Well, I think. We would have to find out from um, National Heritage Conservation Commission whether this place is making business sense, whether it's lucrative. Mm -hmm. But speaking as a lay person, yeah. I think far much more money can be made. It's more, mm -hmm. it's more infrastructure goes here. You have pools, if you have showers, you know, people have some kind of entertainment going on. But then an argument would be placed on that to say if uh, those facilities were to be set up, it would not be accessible to the locals. Uh, so how do you balance it out where the locals can access it in as much as you will come the international choice or anyone else? Any type of development you place in an area like this 
has to take into account the welfare of the physical environment itself and the welfare of the locals. So I understand the fear that if we set up a business, the cost of price of entry might be too much for the locals. But there's need for whoever sets it up to take that into account. The locals own this place. So when you come here and set up a business, you are investing in their place, their area. So you have to take into account the fact that they need access to this spring without paying any charge. If there's a charge, the charge should only be minimal. Yeah. And then uh, from the narration that we had earlier on from uh, the visual representative and the national heritage uh, site, uh, you say that uh, the part that we see was an attempt by a white farmer to make uh, that arrangement of uh, hot spin, uh, jacuzzi kind of arrangement, but privately. So what are your thoughts on that? Like, and did you attempt in that? And from what you say, it wasn't even uh, applied for with any council or any authority. Well, this is a natural resource, mm -hmm. and the government of Zambia owns all natural resources. So personal, I wouldn't be comfortable with an individual since we starting a project. Mm -hmm. So there is need for all stakeholders to be involved. NHCC, the government itself, uh, Zema. If you are inviting investors to come in, they, they will just be part stakeholders. So an individual coming in to try and develop it without formalizing the process, it getting permission, that of course is not right. Yeah. But it's a recipe for, for a disaster. Yeah. If they destroy the spring, mm -hmm. the damage is permanent. So definitely you have to follow the procedures and the key stakeholders from government, Zema, NHPC should all be involved in whatever kind of development you might want to place here. And then, uh, from what we learned, this is not the only spring that we have around here. There is one which has become cold. And uh, from what, what we are getting from the narration or the narrator is that that one was the impact set up as a poor arrangement and became cold. And then there is the spiritual explanation. Uh, do you believe in that? The, the spiritual elements of the, the spring? Well, as an environmentalist, you have to respect what the locals say. You know, it's, it's referred to as indigenous knowledge. Indeed, indeed. It's a type of knowledge. And knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is not only powerful when the professor is expounding. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Even a six-year-old girl that at the center of the village mm -hmm. can give you information that's invaluable. Mm -hmm. More in-depth than the professor is. Exactly. So you value all sorts of knowledge. Yes. And definitely you have to take into account the knowledge of, of the locals. Mm -hmm. You might not believe certain things. They might be outdated when you look at cultural beliefs. Yes. But even cultural beliefs, there are certain things that are still valid and should be preserved. Yes. The beliefs might not be scientifically accurate, yes. but they have a value in terms of storytelling and folklore. Yes, yes. So, uh, if we were to say the interest of the National Heritage um, Site or Management is only to maintain this place, like what would be the steps that they need to take right now in terms of the crowd, what we see, uh, so that there is a balance between maintaining the ecosystem and stuff like that. Because in as much as we say we want to maintain this, if we are going to put slab all over this place, there will be that. So how do you balance out the two? Maintaining the ecosystem around the, the stream and what is also developing? Uh, of course, they would have to engage environmentalists in the process of development. The, the key issue would be to try and make the development a, a shining example of ecotourism. Yes. So whatever development you bring here <coughs> should do as little damage as possible to the physical <laughs> environment. But it, certainly there will be certain places that will have to be monitored. You know, like the, the grass is cut and it's not overgrown with, with vegetation. Yes. It's, it's a question of balancing between the two. Yes. The development and the sections of the area that you maintain the natural. So when, when you look at, um, as you said, we've only been here less than two hours because there, there isn't much to look at. Once you look at the screen, you go like, hey, wow, wow, and then you're like, oh, what else is here to, to do? There, there, there are no refreshments around the area. You have to come with your own refreshments. So uh, like some of the things, if we were to develop this place, that needs to be set up so the person can spend the entire day here and uh, feel like we're at the moment with the family, at the moment with myself. What would be the ideas I would suggest? as an individual. I, I would be thinking of some kind of spa resort where you would have this hot water 
that water right at the source is 70 degrees Celsius. Mm. That's just 30 degrees lesser than 100. Yes. Right? So it's very hot. If you try to touch it, yes. you wouldn't touch it without mm -hmm. screaming and yes. shouting. Yes. So it's very easy to channel this water into mm -hmm. pools, ponds, you could have jacuzzi, you yes. could have showers, you could have saunas, you could have steam rooms. Yes. And the water would be natural water with the minerals that make it therapeutic. Yes. So those are things I would expect to be built to make this place more attractive, not only to the locals, but in terms of foreign exchange, tourists from outside the country, international tourists. Because yes. those are the ones that bring the gold. Indeed, indeed. You know, we talk about alternatives to copper mining in terms of any foreign exchange. Well, this is an industry you could get mm -hmm. into that is and sustainable, like green, green business. Mm -hmm. Once you set up your structures and just maintain the natural environment, the dollars will just keep on flowing. There is no damage or pollution into the waters, the soil, or the air. So it's, it's a green business you'll be setting up that has basically a long lifespan. Yeah, so the hot spring is just like six meters from where we're standing. The rest of the surrounding area is what you see here. You've got, you, you've got the training that's taken place. You've got the grass that's grown. The question is, is this the environment that should be surrounding the, the hot yes, spring? Is, is this enough to attract local and international tourists? That's, that's the question I would like and someone to answer. As a concerned Zambian, that's the question I would like to have answered. Is this enough to attract a hundred tourists a day to this spot? Or we need to do more? Should more be done to this place? So here now we have Innocent and David testing the spring waters about a hundred meters still hot. Still hot. downstream. <laughs> it's still very hot. It's hot, bearably hot. Bearably <laughs> hot, but still hot. Yeah, you can't step in there for more than... And right next seconds. to him you've got I, a piece I, of I, plastic I, over I, there. I think he bats cold water, so let me try it. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> it is. It is. I think how many meters is it from? Almost 200, if not three, isn't it? Uh, it should be it's a, about a hundred meters. Not more. No, no, it's about a hundred. Hundred, hundred fifty, but not more than hundred and fifty. The water feels good on the, on the feet. I, I, I it can does, see huh? how it helps the skin. It's worth visiting, but there is much more that can be done with the Definitely much more. And the stream keeps on flowing further down this way. And down there you've got people washing and some go there for a bath. That's members of the, the local community. Mm. Our experience as a... Uh, Miju Eco Care is that uh, it's it's a worthwhile resource that we have as a nation, uh, which we are underutilizing in terms of uh, how much we can maximize in terms of uh, uh, revenue, one, and uh, access to people. Uh, most of the people, that's the uh, Lusaka residents, think it's very quite far. This is just like uh, five kilometers from the central business district, isn't it? Yeah. It's warm right here. It is. I've been, I've been standing here for more than 30 seconds actually. So within this point, the, the temperature is different. It's not a constant uh, temperature. <laughs> so here it's, it's very hot. Where it's standing, it's been here. Oh yeah, this, this is very mm -hmm. Very hot. Not there. And it's plastic still. There are slippers within. Anyway, we can do better. As a nation and as a people. Instead of spending the entire day here, you can only be here for a couple of hours and you're out. There's nothing else to do. Okay, Gumbi Richard. Nice to meet you. Yeah, also. Mr. Nice Gumbi. Yes, sir. Uh, so, Mr. Gumbi, we're trying to, to find out more about this spring. 
because we only knew about the spring on the other side, the main one, where the structures are. Yeah, yeah. So what's, what's the history and background in connection to this spring? Actually, this is the biggest and it was the hottest. Hotter than the other one? Yeah, yeah. before they constructed, this is the Italians, the one who constructed the pocket. Uh, a pipe that pipe, I've seen the pipe that pipe. Yes, right? yes. Yeah, so after excavating that position, I don't know, maybe the current went that position. Mm -hmm. Be it your it came cool or look well. Oh. Otherwise, it, it was the old thing, the old thing here, the biggest Kalungula. Oh. Here. So there was actually more water flowing yeah, yeah, yeah. here than the other side. This is the white who built this white cool. No, the mm -hmm. white cool is uh, the white, pond. A pond, yeah, yeah. yeah. And flowers around. Okay. So when the Italians came and get uh, trying to, you know, this godrich what mm -hmm. if, uh, this water came, you know, that current, mm -hmm. the degree uh -huh. came down. Ah. Okay. Yeah, yes. Would you happen to remember what year uh, this was set up? When the mm. Sorry. I just can't before. Oh, it's, yeah. it's a long time ago. Ah, it's a long time ago. Oh. Yeah. Then afterwards, afterwards we, we just want to share the information with people that don't know, because we also didn't know that this about this hot the, hot spring that became cold. It was actually hotter than. So a lot of people that come to the other side maybe don't know about this one, and it would be good if people started coming. And you know, NHCC also made money from this. This is an important history yeah. for sure, to, for sure, to the spring. Yeah. For sure, for sure. And that money can be used by NHCC and also used. To develop the local community here because sure, sure. we want enough money to be generated from this place so that the local community also benefits from it. Yeah, so yeah. How, how many years have you been coming here? Actually, uh, approximately about 10 to so. 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. Okay. But just I came recently, otherwise unless this is the solid. Uh, the, the owners owner. of the territory. I mentioned earlier that I've been visiting Chinunyu Hot Springs for so many years. This year and not times. once, yes, this year three times, and not once did I know about this other major spring on the other side of the road. That's Actually, okay. it's Chinunyu Hot Springs, meaning it's, it's more than just one spring. Mm. There are actually a number of them. So the first major one is on the other side of the road, the one that you've seen, and this is the second one. Now, this one is no longer hot. It used to be hot, just like the other one, but now it's cold. But water still runs from the underground to the surface, right through the air. So you can notice we are in October now, and the water is still running. The only problem is people don't come here anymore because the water is cold. So only the animals, you can see the, the cattle right in the background over there. The animals are the ones that come here and drink from it and you can notice from the muddy, murky nature of the water that animals are always here. So there are two explanations as to why this spring actually went right cold. We've got the scientific explanation and we have the traditional explanation and I mentioned earlier on the importance of getting information from, from the locals. According to the locals, the white man that tried to put a pump and pump the water from the mainstream on the other side of the road the one tried to make you. yes the one that was showed there mm. tried to make this mm. pond for people to come and you know entertain themselves but because of the pond the spirits that are believed to be the ones that bring this hot water from the underground yes, got angry and the water became cold that's the traditional explanation. The scientific explanation, according to the guide from National Heritage Conservation Commission, the one that took us around, the scientific explanation is that, you know, all hot springs occur in areas where you have valleys. And where you have valleys, you have fault lines, cracks coming to the surface from the underground. And we know right at the center of the earth, you've got lava and magma, and some of that heat escapes through those cracks, interacts with the underground water, then pushes that pressured water to up surface. to the surface and outside as a spring. Now, the moment you have earthquakes or tremors, 
those cracks or fault lines sometimes close up. Have, have you ever taken a shower from this place? No, the, the closest I've come to is put your feet in there. Putting my feet in. And it, the water is very hot. Oh yes, very very hot. And most times when you try to get to the other side where the, the um, you take your showers from, you find a lot of ladies there. And so it's more dominated by ladies than uh, yeah. gents. Yeah. Okay, so this is the source of the hot water spring. And as we follow it, okay, so if you look around, you actually see that we have a number of plastic bags and um, a bottles around as the heritage guide earlier on said he said people usually use it for spiritual healing and that could be one of the reasons why we have those plastics around then you have algae also that's blocking the, the stream eh? excuse me i'm trying to zoom in the algae yeah so this is the the hot water spring stream running downstream and you've got these uh, stems and sticks people use to cross it. I want you to notice the, the plastic along the stream. Huh? That's literally taking place. You've got some containers here for Pinta milk, they are right in the stream. If you can see that. People here have washed some clothes and they've left them to dry. And you have some more plastic, plastic liter, paper liter, plastic bottle liter over there. That's a plastic bottle liter. And here you have an entire fabric. I don't know whether this is a shirt or a dress. It's just stuck in the stream. And you've got a blue plastic. Blue plastic. You've got a, a shoe over there. Just opposite. Here. And you've got a you've got a sandal. And you have a sandal over here. So there's a lot of litter accumulating along the, the hot spring stream.